Welcome back to our system design series. Today we are going to explore a fundamental concept in designing scalable systems, vertical versus horizontal scaling. Understanding the differences between the, these two scaling uh, approaches is crucial for building systems that can handle increasing loads effectively and efficiently. So let's try to get an example and understand how they work. So let's say that we have a client and we have our own application. Let's say we have our own server and our server, like the, the, the client sends requests to the server. Um, okay, let's delete this one and make it like that. Okay, the client sends requests to the server and everything goes, goes, goes well. But let's assume that um, our client like our server too much, so it sends a, a lot of requests. It sends too many requests. And right now, let's say that we get even more successful, that we have more clients that are trying to send a lot of requests to the server, m even more clients. And right now, our server gets overwhelmed with all of these requests because our server cannot handle all of these requests. So we need to scale. We need to scale our server mm -hmm. so it can handle all of this traffic. There is two approaches. There is vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. We can talk first about the vertical scaling. The vertical, the vertical scaling, also known as scaling up, involves boosting the power of an existing machine like by adding more resources, like we can add more uh, RAM, uh, more CPU, or more storage, and to and yeah, to an existing server to handle increasing loads, so we can add like more source resources to our own server. Um, essentially, uh, basically, you're making a single server more powerful so that it can process more requests. Um, the benefits of this one, it's basically quite simple and um, scaling, vertical, uh, ver scaling vertically is usually simpler to implement compared to horizontal scaling. You don't need to make changes to your application. You just add more hardware resources to your server. The second thing also, which is less management overhead, because since you're only working with one server, there is no need to worry about uh, managing and uh, multiplying nodes, making it easier to maintain. Um, the cons, we have multiple cons here. First of things, we have a single point of failure because relying on a single powerful server introduces a single point of failure. If that server went down, if that server went down, um, your entire system becomes unavailable, which can be a significant risk. The second thing, we have physical limits because there are a physical limits to how much you can uh, upgrade a single machine you can only add so uh, many CPUs uh, or RAM or storage to uh, a server before you hit um, a ceiling. Like you cannot add RAM forever. The second solution will be the horizontal scaling. But the horizontal scaling will work as follows because also known as the scaling out, like involves basically adding more servers. So if we have one, um, instead of having one server, we could have more than one server, so they can handle all the incoming requests. Let's just try to... So and instead of like each client will have, like say this is server 1, this is server 2, and this is server 3. So um, basically it involves adding more servers or nodes to your system to, and to distribute the load across multiple machines. And instead of upgrading a single server, you add more servers to handle increased traffic and distribute tasks among them. Uh, the pros of this one, we have near like uh, limitless scaling, like horizontal scaling allows for almost uh, limitless scalability. You can add more servers to handle increased load, which is a key benefit for applications that need to grow significantly over time. The second thing, we have fault tolerance. Um, unlike the vertical scaling, there is no single point of failure because by distributing the load across multiple servers, horizontal scaling reduces the risk of a single point of failure. If one, server's, if one server goes down, others can continue to handle the workload to Im improving the system's reliability and availability. So if server one went down, we have two more servers that our client can send to them and no problem whatsoever. Uh, the problem of uh, one of the cones of the horizontal scaling, which f f the first thing will be the complexity because 
horizontal uh, scaling brings a complexity of managing a distributed systems you can you need to handle changes like data consistency network latency load balancing and synchronizations between nodes also we have some increased in, op in um, operational overhead because managing multiple servers require more sophisticated infrastructure and monitoring which can lead to increased operational overhead and costs um if we have when to to answer the question about when to use what when to use horizontal scaling and when to use vertical scaling and i would say that you could use vertical scaling it is often suitable for small medium applications where the load is predictable and manageable if simplicity and lower management overhead are per, uh, over, overhead are priorities scaling up might be the best option use horizontal scaling um, is ideal for large scale applications that need to handle massive amounts of traffic or data if you need to achieve high availability and fault tolerance horizontal scaling is the way to go um, so yeah that's it um, and the, yeah that's it if you find this video helpful please like it and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any video and see you guys in future videos